Hey Leo, Avery again, and I'm going to read you the story of Flimbero Lou. The sun always shone in the mountains of Thibble. The wind and the rains never came. To call the place beautiful, no one would quibble. Go hard on the feet, they'd exclaim. But high in those hills, past the rocks and the rubble, so high that the clouds were below, sat two tiny towns that were nothing but trouble. As you listen, you'll see that it's so. The town to the west that thought it was best bore the name Flibro Lou where the women and men since 1710 and worn on their heads one large shoe. Now in town number two, one big shoe when it's due. So the people of Jeopardy Lot will look down and bellow at shoe-headed fellows and place on their own heads a pot. For days without end, these two neighbors were bigger as to whose handgear was best, and the shoes and the pots would fly ever thicker from morning to night without rest. But not all of the people who live in these cities were angry and bitter and vile. A few would write poems and sing happy ditties and greet all their friends with a smile. One Flibian fellow who hated to fight, trying hard not to act like a monster, when pots crashed around him from morning till night, he just played with his pet wind-up lobster. They kept to themselves and they talked. They kept to themselves and they talked and they talked until one day he said, "I'm tired of laying around like a squid. I want to go out there." So that's what he did. The shoe-headed boy and his blue plastic friend walked down of their town and began to descend to the dark, rocky valley between the two cities away from his friends and their light-hearted ditties. He said, But neither the toy nor the boy with the shoe could see the disaster about to ensue. Far up in the rocks, hidden just out of sight, were six beady eyes filled with anger and spite. Six beady eyes watch our hero meander to shifty crooks and their ruthless commander. The nasty one said. Here comes a boy with a shoe on his head. I bet he's got money. I bet he's got gold. Or maybe some jewelry he'd like us to hold. Whatever the movie, I think I could stand it. Why, that's what I live for. That's why I'm a bandit. And then they attacked him from under their rock. First they knocked off his shoe. Then they knocked off his sock. But the thing they did next was extremely unfunny. Why they shook him so hard that he dropped his milk money. He protested, but they didn't care. They accomplished their goal, so they put our friend down, stuck his head in the hole, and walked off with his money every last nickel. They yelled back as they left. Then he said with a moan, Well, I guess I'm alone. But this was the loneliest he never known. His friends were far off and his lobster was missing. The sound he could hear was just the wind hissing. Things looked pretty grim for our Flibian buddy, his head in a hole, his shoe bent and muddy. But then, were those footsteps? Oh, could it be true? Along came the mayor of Flibberaloo. Oh, of anyone, surely he'd help a poor soul, Hello? said a boy with his head in the hole. Said the mayor, observing the shoe.
As soon as the mayor had finished his song, a Flemian doctor came strolling along. She said, starting to slide, Said the doctor. She said to the mayor of Liberalu. Well, they talked about schedules, compare daily planners, till finally a voice said. The two other Flibians paused for a while. They looked at each other, then said with a smile. Oh, it was just dreadful. How could they desert their Flibian friend with his head in the dirt? He wondered. But wait, someone else on the road overhead. Would they help a friend beaten up, left for dead? Or well, look, on his head, not a shoe but a pot. Why, this little guy was from Jeopardy Lot. Would he help a Flibian? Certainly not. The boy with the pots, our friend with the shoe, he exclaimed. He looked at our friend and he looked at the shoe. And then in his heart, he knew what to do. So he got him unstuck and he picked up his shoe and together they walked back to Flibberaloo. Out of the valley and back into town where he stayed by his side till the doctor was found, said the doctor. So the boy with the pot gave the doctor some money to pay for the cucumber spill, and the mayor cried out with his eyes moist and runny. Now, if you visit the mountains of Fibble, you won't see a shoe or a pot. Instead, they throw flowers and candy to nibble. I bet that you'd like it a lot.
the end. 